Thank you, thank you all. Um, well, I'm, uh, I'm Olivier, I'm the head of pedagogy of uh, School uh, 42. Um, what is 42? Well, uh, as uh, um, your uh, uh, presenter just said, uh, it's uh, from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it's the answer for life, universe, and everything. Um, 42 is also an IT school in Paris, and uh, a school with students from uh, 18 to uh, 30 years old, and it has been created by Xavier Niel. Xavier Niel, you may know him, is, uh, I would say, a French telecom tycoon, he's the owner of one of the four telecom companies in France. And uh, um, maybe we can start by why he decided to create 42. Well, uh, obviously, I will talk a little bit about France. Um, usually, we are known as the uh, sixth world economy. And this is, uh, well, because we pretty well negotiated the Industrial Revolution 100 years ago uh, also. But unfortunately, um, well, now the e-economy is growing, and we only are at the 25th rank regarding the e-economy. And it's uh, lowering. Um, we are not alone to, have this, to face this problem. Uh, actually, all the Europe is facing this problem and this lack of IT professional to develop this e-economy. By 2020s, it was in a report four, four years ago, the European Commission stated that there will be this million of professional, this lack of uh, one million professional. Well, Xavier Niel is uh, owner of a telecom company. He is facing this problem. He's facing this lack of uh, IT professional. When we are thinking about e-economy, we usually have these uh, nice logos who are coming uh, to our minds. We are thinking about Uber, Airbnb. We are also thinking about Facebook and Twitter. From my point of view, this company represents the second step of IT inside companies. The first step was back in the 80s or in the 90s, IT as an automation process inside company. IT was here to support an already existing chain of value inside companies. Then, 20 years ago, with the internet, came the second step of IT. IT became more strategic. IT created new business model. For example, a few years ago, um, a company who is creating, I don't know, shoes, for example, decide from the boss, OK, we'll launch this new kind of shoes, and then the process go through all the different offices inside the company up to the factory to create the new shoes. Now, with your own smartphone, you can choose the model, you can choose the color, you can choose to add a nice logo on your shoes, and it's directly sent to the factory. So it's a completely new way of making money. IT has this new role and this new strategic role. Regarding education, digitalization in education, the words that come in mind are Coursera. Edix. It's MOOCs, but my point of view is that MOOCs are only the first step. MOOCs are only, usually, an automation of what's happening in a classroom. So maybe a second step is missing. And Xavier Niel, who decided to create 42, also had this feeling that education is not synchronized anymore with what is happening in companies and in the society. Actually, well, just to connect with our previous speaker, education is still connected to the industrial revolution, to the previous revolution. Today, in a company, you need collaboration. Unfortunately, at least in France, I don't know here, but at least in France, collaboration is often known as cheating in classroom in France. So, um, also, this company needs to collaboration because of the all amount of data that is available today. When you want to create a new product, you just need to have different brains from the beginning to think about everything. To have a competitive product, not all the information can just stuck into one brain. So what you need to do is to improve this collaboration to have a good product in your company. And it's not what is happening in a classroom. Also in a classroom, you usually have a very individual approach 
of learning. In front of one specific problem, two students who just did the same curriculum will probably have the same answer. Today in a company, you always need to think out of the box. If you want to have an innovation, if you want to create a new product that will have a lot of market share, you need to think out of the box. So, with this lack of IT professional, and with this um, information that education cannot fill the uh, lack of IT professional because it does not develop the right skills, Xavier decided to create 42. Here I have a nice picture of 42. It's a picture of uh, one of our computer room. Uh, we have three of them, almost uh, 1,000 computers, and our students just come and go here, and uh, they uh, can, in this kind of room, uh, just um, progress into the curriculum using our pedagogical model. But before uh, explaining our pedagogical model, just a few more words. We decided to have no degree requirement. If, as I just said, education is completely out of sync with the society and with what's happening in company, why should I rely on a French high school degree to detect IT talent? No, we won't to detect IT talent, so we decided to get rid of any degree requirement. And we wanted to detect IT talent regardless of the school background, but also the social background. That's why Xavier Niel decided to have a school completely free for students. To detect these IT talents, we need a very strong selection process. First, we have online tests. It's some kind of high-Q test and also some small games. And then we have the second part of the selection process. It's called la piscine. It's a French word for swimming pool. Maybe you have a, a little bit heard of it if you read something about 42. And it's a four weeks long selection process and students are in 42 and they will actually just taste what the curriculum is. They will taste two things. They will taste what is coding because some of them never start any kind of software development before, and it's okay. They will test if coding, see if they like coding or not. And also they will test the peer learning system, which is our pedagogical model. Today, 42 is more than 3,000 students and 900 new students in something like a month. And uh, it's open 24 by 7. Students can just organize themselves like they want. So what is our pedagogical model? As we early said, first, there is no lecture. There is no teacher. And we do not provide any kind of MOOCs or online or videos of lectures. So what are our students doing? Well, they are spending their time on um, software development challenges to try to solve these problems. Our project is 100% project-based and practice. To solve this project, they will have no lecture, no hints, no element of any kind of solution. They will need to gather information, to collect information, and to learn how to filter this information, to test each information, to know if one information, one piece of information is irrelevant or is true or is false or is interesting to solve the challenge. Usually it's not enough. And our students also need to debate. This is one of the big parts of our pedagogical model and it's why it's called peer learning. The students need to debate between themselves. They need to explain, okay, how did you understood this project? Okay, I understood they like this. Okay, no, I think you're wrong and maybe you're missing something. What we want here is to create collective intelligence. All students come together with their own idea and own point of view, and then hopefully at the end of the debate, they are able to get back and test new hypotheses that no one brought in the first time. 
So, when a project is over, students are doing peer evaluation. Maybe just a, a little insight right here. Um, I mentioned earlier that 42 is more than 3,000 students today. Our pedagogical team is seven people. So of course, we can do any kind of evaluation on ourselves. ourselves. So that's why we are doing peer evaluation. Um, but also peer evaluation is usually a good way to uh, take some heights and to think more about some different theories. Because in peer evaluation, you will get usually five different evaluations from your peers, from other students, and you will discuss with them about their own approach to solve the problem. Each student will then also, um, usually from time to time, um, grade some other students and again exchange ideas. Each student will progress at its own pace inside the curriculum. When a project is over, a project, and if it's a failure, the students will start the project again. If it's a success, the project, the students will uh, unlock the next project and also earn some experience points. All the curriculum just acts like a giant video game. With the experience points, students go from one level to another level. We have some quests, we have some badges, we have houses, just like in uh, Harry Potter, and students can choose their own path, their own pace, their own path. It's a completely individual way of learning for them. On their own intranet, they have all the information they need. They know exactly the project they succeed, the project they fail and they can try again, the projects that are available, and the projects that are, are still locked because they do not have yet the requirements. This pedagogy, well, it's a little bit longer than 42. 42 have been created five years ago, in 2013. But with our team, we developed this pedagogy for almost 25 years now. At the beginning, the idea was to get a previous IT school closer to what's happening in companies. Because usually in companies, you don't have any teacher. Usually in companies, you need to create real piece of software because you will sell them to a customer. In a company, you need to collaborate with a lot of different people, usually, and we can see in uh, some new tech and new digital companies, um, some new way of management and peer reviews uh, between uh, uh, people uh, in, the same, uh, in the same company. But, with a little bit of, uh, not inspiration, but with a little bit of connection and debate uh, with other uh, people during conferences, we also uh, made some connection with some uh, educational things that have been for a long time now. Um, what we are doing uh, have been connected, for example, with what Sugata Mitra is doing. If you do not know Sugata Mitra, uh, maybe you should have a look at his TED talk. Just in a few words, he, 20, 20 years ago, he decided to embed a computer in a wall in uh, New Delhi, in a slum in New Delhi, and just look at what was happening. The children over there were not at school, just start using the computer. And after a while, uh, they were able to correctly use the computer and then they were able to browse and they started also learning uh, written English. So um, it was very interesting and uh, Sugata Mitra also tried to replicate this pedagogical model and this approach in a UK uh, primary school uh, a few years ago. I've also here some picture of uh, Celestin Frenet, Maria Montessori or Jean Piaget. They are well-known uh, specialists in pedagogy which I'm not. Um, but um, by some ways, I think that uh, what they did and what we are doing can be uh, a little bit connected. I also had some um, um, 
not information, but some thought about people that are thinking that what we are doing uh, can be uh, also described as natural learning, meaning the way of baby, uh, the way of uh, how baby learn how to walk and how to talk. When a baby is trying to walk, usually you do not have an adult saying, okay, stop. Before trying to wake up, I will teach you a lecture about gravity, about the forces on your leg, and then maybe you will be able to try, but you will need to succeed at the first time. If you fail, it will be very bad for you. Usually it does not happen like this. And by the way, at the end, um, people know, well, babies know how to work at 10 months old, one year old, one year and a half. Everyone knows how to work at the end. I'm just wondering why at age of six, we want that everyone starts reading or writing at exactly the same age and the same time. So what are the results of 42 so far? Um, we have a lot of job and internships offers. Um, almost twice our number of students. And we have very good feedbacks because it's our main quality indicator here. So of course, we get feedbacks from companies to know if what we are doing uh, just fits their needs. We also have a lot of students that start their own career before the end of 42. Well, at one point, they read uh, something like half of the curriculum, and they just realize that they have very good job opportunities. So what is our goal? Is our goal for our students to read the end of the curriculum? No, actually, our real goal here is to provide our students a way of going into the labor market, into the IT market, in a sustainable way. So if they find a job and if they really learn their career, we are completely okay with this. Finally, the company tells us that the skill we developed are indeed the skills they are expecting. But what kind of skill exactly? Well, uh, of course we are an IT school. So of course we will develop some classic IT skills, like uh, algorithm, network, artificial intelligence, security, and so on. But it's not our main aim here. What we really want to do is uh, to develop adaptation skills, to develop problem-solving skills, collaboration, diversity handling, self-think, creative, uh, um, critical thinking, sorry, self-learning, and then also creativity. But it's, this is not quite very new for you. I guess the two previous presentations also mentioned this kind of skills. My problem can be easily or more easily understandable because IT is evolving very fast. So I do not know, as a dean of study, what should I have today in the curriculum so my students are okay and are fine for 40 years long career. It's not possible because in five years, in 10 years, there will be new languages, there will be new pieces of software, there will be a um, lot of difference and a lot of change. Why we also uh, decided to have creativity in our curriculum is because, uh, well, artificial intelligence is uh, Slightly, uh, slowly uh, replacing a lot of different jobs, uh, maybe half of them in the next 20 years. Um, but probably in 20 or 30 years, artificial intelligence will also be able to create piece of software. So my own students will create the, own, uh, the artificial intelligence that will replace their own jobs. So what will be the value of a human being there? in this context. Definitely being creative, being able to create something that is improbable and handle this improbability is definitely something that a human being must do. A little bit quickly, what we want is definitely to have an agile state of mind. We are doing a lot of hackathons, a lot of connections with uh, companies with other schools, um, a lot of uh, 
uh, entrepreneur program, and uh, I will not talk about the Pôle emploi experiment. It's our unemployment office in France. We are trying to bring back to the job uh, some people who are unemployed for almost two years uh, while with, uh, uh, mixing them with our students to try to have a, uh, to, try, to try to have them to get the right agile set of minds that they probably lose at some point. Well, I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. I could probably talk for an hour or more, about 42. Um, I think that we are a different offer of uh, uh, educational, uh, um, a different path of education possible. And uh, I hope I convinced you that we are an example of what can be a digital transformation into education. And thank you very much.